Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello Halal family, welcome to the channel I hope you guys are having yourself a wonderful uh, day In today's video guys, we'll be reacting to uh, iPhone uh, 12 Pro uh, Teardown So stay tuned, we'll be right back with the video Welcome back guys, inshallah we're gonna get started with the video momentarily and at the end of the video I'll be sharing with you my observation and reaction so please make sure you stay until the end. With that said, we're gonna get started with our video. Today we're gonna to take apart the brand new iPhone 12 Pro. We already know the outside is new and different with its stainless steel sides, flush screen and ceramic shield glass. But we know true beauty lies on the inside. The iPhone 12 Pro has a series of magnets just below the back glass and I'm curious to see what those look like from the inside. One thing you'll really want to avoid though is letting your wallet or credit card get too close to the back of the phone. Magnets can ruin credit cards, unless of course you carry a shielded wallet. Huge thanks to Ridge Wallets for sponsoring this video. I got my own Ridge Wallet about two years ago, and it's been in my front pocket ever since. I got the burnt titanium version, since titanium is one of the coolest metals in existence. Fun fact, did you know there's a hidden spider on the $1 bill? Cool little trick to show your friends. All you need is a dollar and some friends. If you don't have either, you can still optimistically get a new wallet and just hope for the best, like we're all doing for 2021. Mine's a bit worn after being in my pocket for two years, but the burnt titanium still looks pretty good. It can hold up to 12 cards plus cash. The Ridge wallet comes in 30 different styles, like aluminum, carbon fiber, forged carbon, and a limited edition topographical map of Half Dome, and you can choose between the money strap or the clip version. Since these are metal, of course, you probably don't want to carry them in the same pocket as your iPhone, but it's good to know that if they do ever end up next to each other, on a table or desk or something, the magnets in your phone won't hurt the cards since the wallets are shielded. I'll leave a link down in the description. You can use the code JERRYRIG to get 10% off your order and free worldwide shipping. There's a lifetime warranty and a full 45-day return policy if you don't like it. I've definitely been happy with mine though. Now it's time to take apart the new iPhone 12 Pro. Let's get started. The iPhone 12 Pro design has changed things up a bit this year, but of course it still has the two pentalobe screws down at the bottom. This time around, the iPhone 12 Pro is quite a bit more water resistant as well. Still IP68, but tested at a depth of 6 meters in water instead of the normal 4 meters that the iPhone 11 Pro was tested at last year. So there is quite a bit more adhesive, which requires more heat. And the screen being inlaid flush with the stainless steel housing also makes things a little more difficult. Long story short, the quickest way to learn something new is by using someone else's mistakes. And as I was lifting up the screen, I didn't go quite deep enough to grab the frame, and I accidentally stabbed the screen under the glass. And while I was able to get the screen off in one piece, that little stab in the wrong spot killed the screen entirely. So it's a good idea to learn from my mistakes if you ever need to open one of these up. The phone is still alive, but uh, now I'll need a new screen. Anyway, besides the fact that I just broke a phone in front of millions of people, there are two tri-point screws holding down a metal plate over the battery. I'll remove those, as well as the metal plate, so we can get to the real goods inside. I'll unsnap the battery ribbon just like a little Lego, along with the screen ribbon. There's another plate up top with four more tri-point screws that I'll remove before unsnapping the screen from the phone entirely. Replacement iPhone 11 Pro screens are around $170 right now, so I imagine the iPhone 12 Pro will be priced similarly when they start coming out. If Apple doesn't digitally lock them to the motherboard, making third-party repairs impossible, which they seem to be doing more of lately. There is a smorgasbord of other connectors revealed now that the screen is gone. Connectors on top of connectors. So it looks like I'll just be unsnap, snap, 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 snapping them just like little Legos. The last one is taped to the top of the motherboard, so I'll peel it back and move it out of the way before we head over to the cameras. There are four screws holding down the metal plate over the camera units. The iPhones are always super complex inside, and this one requires at least four different screwdriver bits and a whole lot of organization, since pretty much each screw is a different size and shape. The top camera is the main one, the 12 megapixel sensor with optical image stabilization. Then we have the 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with no OIS, and the bottom 12 megapixel 2 times optical zoom camera, which does have that OIS. You might be asking, hey Jerry, what about the LiDAR sensor? And that's a great question. We'll get to it in a second. Still inside of the phone, we have the front face ID and the 12 megapixel selfie camera. 
the LiDAR module is still screwed in and facing the rear of the phone. The brains of the operation, the motherboard, has six screws holding it in place. The SIM card tray has a white water damage indicator sticker over the top grille. The sticker can be seen from outside of the phone if you just peek inside of your SIM card tray slot. Apple's pretty smart. Their phones might be water resistant, but they're not waterproof, and Apple can tell if it ever gets wet when that sticker turns pink. There are two more ribbons at the bottom of the motherboard, and then the whole thing can pull away from the phone. It's another double stacked board again this year, with no thermal paste or copper heat pipe. It's just living its best life with no extra cooling. The LiDAR sensor is held in place by two more screws. LiDAR is actually pretty cool. It's like a depth sensor on steroids, able to bounce infrared light from one circle and measure the bounce back to calculate distances. It makes for some really fast 3D scanning and measuring. It's even found in some self-driving cars. Here in the iPhone, it'll probably mostly be used for really fast autofocusing for the camera, but it's still cool to see futuristic technology in a mainstream smartphone. Now, the iPhone battery does have the magical pull tabs, but I'm gonna bust your bubble and just break it to you that I basically broke all of them. And had to pull the battery out with my bare hands instead. The battery is a bit smaller than last year's iPhone 11 Pro, sitting at just 2,815 milliamp hours. We also get our first look at the top side of the wireless charging coil. Spoiler alert, the other side looks way cooler. But first we'll pull out the loudspeaker. It's a gigantic mess down here, with 10 more different sized and shaped screws and standoffs. But we finally do get to lift out the loudspeaker, with its water-resistant mesh inside of the opening. As well as a new massive orange gasket to help seal up that hole. The SIM card tray is modular, kind of fun. The Taptic engine is also a bit smaller this year. But, interesting fact, Apple plopped a Lego-style connector right in the middle of the ribbon. Whoever said Apple doesn't innovate has obviously never seen this. Plus, there's this thing down here that looks super important, and I don't even know what it does. If the iPhone looks like a chaotic nightmare inside, it's because it is. The wireless charger is physically tied into the phone's side buttons. So I'll unscrew this metal bracket on the side and pull the mute switch through the frame. Then finally, after everything, we get our first look under the wireless charging pad and glimpse this glorious array of circular magnets around the outside. It's rather brilliant of Apple to use magnets to perfectly position the two coils on top of each other. Instead of using one large circle magnet, it's actually made up of 18 smaller, more rectangular magnets. Apple has said that every single magnet used in the iPhone 12 is recycled, which is awesome. Getting rid of the charging brick, headphones, and making the box smaller is also supposed to help out the environment. Fun fact though, creating a brand new smartphone consumes almost as much energy as using a smartphone for an entire decade. So since Apple has over 1 billion active iPhones on the planet right now, if they really wanted to help the environment, they'd make their phones easier to repair. I mean, let's be honest, making the box smaller is peanuts compared to how much energy we could save by just using our phones for an additional year or two. Not much changes between each new version of a phone anyway. Of course, every step towards helping the environment is a good step, but I would like to see Apple facilitating repairs instead of just locking every component to the motherboard and having people buy new phones. Which seems to be their current trend. The underside of the glass can be scratched away, making for a small frosted glimpse into the wireless charger. Apple could make one of the coolest clear phones of all time with this coil, but they didn't. So I did. Every real detail from the inside of the phone can now be seen on the outside, without voiding your warranty. Even the magnets. We can see the magnets, the charging coil, and even the water damage indicator sticker here on the SIM card tray. And if we bring over the magical magnetic MagSafe charger, we can see how the two work together. The charging coil plugged into the wall creates a small energy field that the receiving coil can receive. Science is pretty cool. I'll leave a link for my teardown skin down in the video description along with the Ridge wallet, and I'll get this phone put back together and working again once I find a replacement screen. Let me know what you think of Apple's new charging system. Would you ever buy a clear iPhone? Let me know down in the comments. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around. Apple does make some interesting um, hardware, you know, they got their uh, 
laptops, their uh, basically iMacs and the towers and the iPads and the iPods and the iPhones and it's uh, crazy, you know, you see just the pieces are so intricate and everything goes together and uh, they make it look really clean but it's a lot of work and a lot of planning and a lot of detail that goes in it and uh, you know just watching this was um, a little uh, heart wrenching because he's scratching them <laughs> and he's breaking stuff but most likely i don't know maybe he will use it maybe he'll just throw it away who knows right but it was uh, interesting it was uh, nice to see you guys i hope you guys enjoyed it too if you did please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and if you like me to react to another video please put in the comment section below as always guys thank you very much for your love and support i hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day take care of yourself and your family inshallah i'll see you guys in the next video take care Wassalam.